Uh, hello, Singapore. I'm happy to see all you. And it's my second time in Singapore and Red Dot RubyConf. And because today we have after party, I need to say some small thing about Singapore. Uh, do you need or do you know what uh, Merleon is uh, defined? It's a monument of the center of city. It's a big uh, monument with uh, it's uh, Leo and fish. But in Singapore, uh, this means something else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Anton. Uh, you can uh, find some links here. And I'm a software engineer from Russia. Two days ago, I had a 10 hours direct flight from Moscow to Singapore. It was fun. Uh, <laughs> and just two things uh, what you need to know about me. Uh, first, I really love stickers. And second, I really love, I'm sorry, I really love open source. And maybe this is why I'm Hanami Core. And my commits and pull requests you can find in some uh, projects like Ruby Rails, Dry, ROM, and Crystal. Uh, and also, I'm curator of uh, one small community in Moscow. It's Moscow RB. And we have meetups and cups and something else. Uh, but today we'll talk about Hanami. Uh, in Japanese language, you can find the uh, definition of uh, Hanami. And usually it's a process when you're watching the, uh, watching the flower bloom. Uh, I have a special uh, illustration for this process. Uh, but of course, today we'll talk about Ruby and framework, which is called Hanami 2. Uh, and uh, uh, this framework was, uh, was created by a developer from Italy. His name is Luca, and he has a birthday today. Uh, so this, uh, the first comment was created uh, three and a half years ago. And as you can see, Hanami is a really young framework. Uh, also, we have a uh, person in core team. Um, Marion was speak uh, half or one hour ago, maybe more. Uh, and uh, let's talk about general ideas. Uh, the first idea is uh, modularity. Uh, it means two things in Hanami. First, uh, you can change any part of Hanami to other part. For example, you can drop your ORM and use Active Record, for example. I don't know why, but you can. Uh, and second part, it's a really simple way to separate your logic to small modular modules. And the second thing, it's uh, simplicity and lightweight. Uh, I think the simple tool is uh, provide your ability to start working on production application or production project faster. And I think uh, that framework is just a tool. Uh, don't make a cult of it. Uh, next idea is uh, architecture sound. Uh, if you are going to use Hanami, uh, you gain uh, more freedom. Uh, it means that you don't need to think how you can mix in uh, your application and framework conventional. And you can just use uh, both, and all will good. Uh, also, next idea is poor objects and zero monkey patching. Uh, why zero monkey patching is so important? Uh, for this, I have a special quiz for you. Uh, just try to answer. It's uh, Rails method or Ruby. What, uh, so uh, who thinks that it's Rails method? OK. Uh, uh, who thinks that it's Ruby method? So, oh, OK. It's a uh, Rails method. Uh, and the last part uh, is the last main idea of this framework. It's thread safe. It's really important because uh, we uh, don't worry about parallel computing. And uh, please remember, if you want to remember only one thing from my uh, talk, just remember this thing. It's really important. Uh, Hanami, it's not Rails. <laughs> <laughs> it's important, really. Uh, and uh, Rails is not Hanami. It's uh, two different web frameworks. Uh, and comparison is a really stupid idea. But of course, we'll compare this framework later. Uh, so uh, let's talk about a typical web project. Um, you can see any web project, and you will see two different parts. Uh, First path is uh, business logic, and second, it's uh, data flow. And uh, let's talk about data flow. 
so what I mean, uh, what I mean on the data flow term, uh, usually it's something uh, which take your request, uh, do something what you don't know, and after that uh, respond this request. And uh, Hanami have a special architecture. It's a container architecture. And what does it mean for you as a for, de for developer? Uh, it's uh, we have only one. Uh, we have one folder, and it's uh, applications folder. And in this folder, you can see uh, you, you can see uh, some applications, a small application. And in each application, for example, on this slide, it's admin application. Uh, you can see uh, controllers, uh, view objects, uh, routing, and some assets and templates in one place. And also, if you look on web application in this example, you'll see something like in admin application. And why it's so important and cool? Uh, so the first idea why it's cool is, uh, for example, you have three different instances of your application with uh, three different three uh, instances of your project with uh, three instances of uh, with three paths with three applications in each instance and with this uh, architecture uh, you can uh, in future uh, you can uh, start your server only with one application for example uh, for example you can start uh, your server only with uh, admin application or maybe only with web or API application. And why it's important? Uh, for example, you want to protect uh, admin application in private network. And, uh, no, uh, and in next version of Hanami, you can just uh, start server only with admin application where you want, and that's all. Uh, so let's talk a bit about business logic. Uh, all business logic you can find in, uh, in folder library. library. And uh, usually uh, here you can see uh, module. Uh, in Hanami we use a repository pattern. Uh, we will talk about it later. Also you can find some uh, interactors, uh, mailers, and what you want to see. Uh, so uh, I told that Hanami is a modular web framework. And this framework consists of 10 different gems. Uh, the first five, it's uh, uh, Hanami is a base repository uh, with command line interface, and usually when you put in your console Hanami new project name, uh, works this uh, gem. Uh, uh, and also it's router, controller, utils, model, and uh, val uh, validations, helper, view, assets, and mailer. And uh, I know that all this theoretical stuff is look difficult, uh, as well, let's talk about the uh, difference between Hanami and other frameworks. Uh, and first, my example is uh, REC application. Uh, typical REC application consists of one class with one uh, public method. Usually, it's call method. Uh, you, and this method takes uh, environments. And uh, you need to return an array of three elements. It's uh, status, environments, and somebody in array. Uh, and what we can see in Hanami, uh, in this example I used Hanami Router, it's a REC application and we can mount this REC application into our router and it will be work. Uh, let's talk about Sinatra. In Sinatra we have one class with one uh, class method uh, which take uh, path and body and that's all. Uh, in Hanami uh, we can uh, define block for our router and map something to router. And it's logical to compare rail section and Hanami action. I have a really nice example of typical rail, rail section. It looks like this. Uh, I'm just kidding, relax. Uh, so uh, I told that uh, compare of uh, rails and Hanami is a really stupid idea. It's a different framework. And uh, all these frameworks uh, use MVC pattern. And that's why I think it will be good to uh, check uh, every part of MVC and display and show how it realized uh, how it makes in Rails and Hanami, and we start with uh, controllers. Uh, just a second. Uh, in Rails, uh, we have one class with uh, some methods, and each method in this class is uh, action. You can call these methods in any name. You can use anything and what you want. 
Um, in um, uh, of course, you can use uh, DHH style for uh, DHH style for your controllers. It will be only REST actions. Uh, but uh, in Hanami, uh, we have a uh, little bit other um, uh, architecture. We have only one class, and uh, each class is uh, action. Uh, it means if you have a controller with five endpoints, uh, it will be generate one model and five classes. And uh, you can see that this class have only one uh, public method. Uh, it's call method. And uh, it looks like a service object, functional object, what you want. And also, uh, it's really important and super cool. Uh, you can validate your parameters in action. And uh, it's separate logic for all your actions. Uh, let's talk about models. A uh, typical Rails model, it's uh, one class. Uh, and in this class, you can find uh, some uh, includes from, I don't know, for example, it's uh, Gravastic. Uh, uh, also, this class have callback and data logic. Uh, also, this class have database logic and associations. And after all this, this class have validations. And I have only one question. It's, uh, is, is it normal that one class uh, know about uh, four or five different things? Uh, I think no, uh, and in Hanami, uh, Hanami based on Rome. Uh, Rome is a Ruby object mapper. It's a, re a really nice project, and uh, as I told, uh, Hanami uh, provides repository pattern. This pattern consists of two different things. Uh, first thing is entity, and entity is a usual data object. It's immutable, uh, immutable data object like virtus or dry types or what you want. And uh, uh, you can in, in, uh, initialize your uh, object uh, with some attributes. You can get this attributes value, but you can't uh, to assign some new value to this attribute. And for this, you need uh, to uh, in, in initialize new object with new attributes. And the uh, second part, it's a repository. Repository, it's uh, one class which know all about uh, your database. Uh, in my case, you can see that repository know about associations. And also in uh, instance method, you can see that I call ROM relation and work with uh, this ROM re relation. And uh, usage of this is look like uh, this. It's, uh, you need to in in initialize uh, uh, relay, uh, repository object, and after that, call some methods for this. Uh, so, if you look, uh, if you talk about view in Rails, we have a view folder, uh, and I don't know why, but uh, we have uh, templates in this folder and Rails helpers. Uh, someone have a problem with uh, Rails helpers? Well, uh, in Hanami, uh, we have a little bit different way. We have uh, view objects. It's uh, just a class for each uh, v, uh, for each template, uh, and also we have templates. And in these templates, you can use, uh, you can call uh, view logic and uh, some data from your actions. Uh, unfortunately, I don't like this part of my talk. Uh, That's why I leave it uh, as an elective for independent review. Uh, but uh, in any project, you can use Webpack. Uh, so let's talk about proxy, uh, pros and cons. Uh, so first pros is no magic. Uh, it's not about. Uh, uh, it's not only about uh, monkey patching. It's uh, about testing, for example. And in this example, you can see typical Hanami action. It's just a class. Remember this. And if you want to test this class, you need to write uh, this test, and that's all. In this test, you need to analyze your um, in, uh, action instance. And after that, you need to call this method, method call, with uh, params. In my case, it's just hash. And this action uh, will return an uh, array of three different elements. First element is status. Second is uh, environment variables. And last is body. And after that, you can check it like a, like a poor Ruby object. 
So uh, I told about monkey patching, and I think it's a big problem because uh, because I really often see you see similar questions on Stack Overflow. Uh, in this question, one guy, uh, one person, ask uh, how he can call uh, method uh, weeks from integer in Sinatra application. Um, I think uh, this is why I think it's so important to see the difference between uh, language and framework. Um, next uh, pros, it's uh, best practice. And uh, I think Hanami uh, is a great tool because uh, they teach developers to dependency injection. You can open uh, Hanami guides and you will see that uh, in one big part of uh, uh, actions, uh, Part about dependency injections, so why it's so cool, and uh, how we can test some uh, actions without uh, mocking and stubbing. Uh, Hanami teach developers to logic separation. Uh, in this case, uh, you can use uh, uh, you can use interactors for this. Uh, you start thinking about where I need to put this uh, logic in action, in model, in entity, or maybe in repository. And also Hanami teach us developer how to TDD. Um, and uh, this framework used test-first principles. And uh, I uh, displayed one example how to test, uh, how to test uh, action in the right way. And if you open uh, getting started guide in Hanami, uh, first code will you see, it will be a, a test code. Uh, but I'm sorry I forgot that TDD is dead. Is dead. Uh, and let's talk about cons. And the first cons is TDD. Uh, it's not a problem of Hanami or Rails or something else. It's a problem of TDD. And with TDD, you need to cover your test by some strange and uh, uh, not important method like uh, method form in your view object. Uh, uh, other Cons, it's a uh, good but not a great documentation. It's a really young framework, uh, and we have a really nice documentation, but if you try to do something super custom, uh, you will get error, and uh, usually uh, it's really hard to find some documentation for Hanami if we look something, I don't know, join 15 tables with some something else, something else, something else. Uh, in Rails, we have other other situation, we have uh, many blog posts, documentations about it. And uh, other cons, it's uh, missing gem gems. Uh, just think Rails, it's uh, 10 years old. 10 years old framework. Uh, Sinatra, it's eight years old. And uh, uh, I had this talk one year ago on Yeruko. And uh, when I prepared to this talk today, I saw one interesting, uh, one interesting uh, thing. Uh, on previous year, with all this stuff, we had a problem. Uh, but today, we have problem only with one part. It's uh, something like device. Uh, but in next uh, Hanami release, in 1.1, .1, uh, we'll fix this problem, because it's a problem of command line interface, and uh, it's not super important. But anyway, if you want to... Um, if you want to add something special for Hanami, you can do it by self, and... Uh, this. <laughs> uh, so I told about some gems uh, and solutions. All we have an awesome list uh, on this link. Uh, you can find information about uh, some gems, some uh, integration with Sidekick, for example, or something else, and uh, useful and helpful blog posts. And uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have a free time and you want to play with uh, real uh, production applications uh, written on Hanami, I have some uh, open source projects uh, which I use uh, every day, maybe every week. Uh, the first project, it's my project, uh, it's a simple way to finding your started repositories. It's uh, written on Hanami, it's full open source, you can send me pull request if you want. And second project, it's uh, Hanami Contributors. It's like uh, Rails Contributors, but written on Hanami. And uh, uh, some contacts on this page, uh, you can find our site. Uh, on this site, you can find many uh, useful information. Uh, also, we have a chat where you can ask anything every time. 
and we have forum for some feature requests and etc. And uh, this is all end. Thank you. Any questions? As the man said, any questions? Are there hands being raised or am I missing something? <laughs> any questions at all? Yeah. Uh, so thank you for your talk. Um, so I think you mentioned there that there is no monkey patch. Yes. How do you enforce that in the uh, project? We use special models and it looks like Hanami utils uh, string and in this string we use all methods which we need. Okay. And of course you can use it in your application. Any more questions? Oh. Hi Anton, uh, so I was following uh, this, uh, the, the development of Hanami and the DryRB stack and I know that uh, at some point, Hanami, I don't know, gave up on its own validations module and instead of using the dry validations. I'm wondering if you're planning more merging or do you think that these, uh, these two stacks will be just developed in parallel from now on? Uh, so uh, in Hanami, we use uh, dry validation for, and you can use uh, all features of dry validation, uh, like uh, sharing your scheme and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, about uh, second question, it was about uh, so I'm wondering if you're going to, if Hanami is going to merge to, to build its features on top of dry RB in more cases, if you're planning to, I don't know, do they use it for uh, business logic or for containers or monads. Mm. So I'm asking about the development plan of the Hanami, what's the, if it's in the roadmap, if you're planning to mer make these two stacks uh, like uh, really work I don't together. Know. We use uh, dry when we need it. Uh, and, uh, you can use a dry stack in your Hanami application. It's easily, you can use transactions and what you want. But in Hanami, I don't know, we have uh, features and problems, but we don't have something like, oh, we need to use dry transaction. We really need it. We need to find some problem to fix it with dry transaction. No, we don't have this. OK. Uh, is Sorry, was someone speaking? Uh, oh. Okay, we have a question from the back. So, uh, uh, in Rails, uh, we have uh, the uh, database table migration, right? What time, sorry? For evolution the database schema. So, is there any feature like uh, uh, DB migration? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't hear you. Oh, yeah, uh, we have uh, DB migration from uh, SQL. Uh, by Jeremy. Uh, you can use it now and it will work now and I think in future guys from Rome want to create super migrations stuff and I think in future we will use this stuff instead of uh, SQL. Okay. All right. Okay, we have one at the back and my friend will run to him instead of me. Oh, I forgot to say Thanks. I have a sticker Thanks for so running over. Uh, just want to ask, what inspired you to do the Hanami? What I'm sorry? Uh, what do you, what inspired you to do that framework or inspired the team to do that framework? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think it's like why Hanami and, and uh, what, yeah. what was the inspiration for it? For me? Or what for the, the for the Hanami project? Uh, so, um, if you want, you can find a blog post from Luca. Uh, it's a uh, four years old blog post, if I remember right. And uh, he has some troubles with Rails because he tried to fix uh, some stuff uh, which uh, uh, he tried to fix some uh, architecture stuff uh, in Rails and uh, he had a big problem because uh, conventional of, ra of Rails is a very uh, important thing of Rails. And that's why he understands that, okay, I'll write my framework with something. Okay. Do we have anyone else? All right. Let's give it up for Anton. All right. Thank you.